Hello, everyone. Welcome back to JSA TV. We are here live from DCD, Virginia, just outside of Washington, DC. I am here with one of my favorite repeat <laughs> return guests. I don't know if we'll be able to make it through this interview, but we're going to try. Um, so we've got Sam Rabinowitz. Did I say it? Did Nailed I it. it. Right. Nailed it. All right. So, see, he wouldn't tell me if I was wrong. So <laughs> we'll, we'll never know. But CEO of Lantana LED. Um, we did the same interview at, uh, last year, I think, at DCD Virginia. Yeah. Um, so a lot has happened since then. You all are yeah. growing Oof. quite quickly. Yeah. Can't keep up with you. So maybe you can give us a little update. We're going to talk a bit about value engineering today. So I'm just going to dive right into it. Uh, to, to make sure that we get through this to get, we're, we're here, we're going to make it through. Okay. So a new topic you, you've addressed recently is value engineering. So can you just, first of all, like lay, lay that, that down a little bit? What is, what is it? Sure. Explain it a little bit for our audience. Sure. Uh, value engineering is, as many of you know, but for those of you who don't and need a refresher, value engineering is the natural and, and sometimes frequent process of examining a design, the, the best intentions of a design, and then identifying where there can be, you know, where, where cost can be taken out of that design. So we're looking at the, at the overall intent, making sure that quality stays the same, but then also examining how can we deliver this in a more cost effective basis. Perfect. All right. You know how to give a very succinct. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So, okay. So why isn't value engineering valuable when it comes to data center lighting? Like, what yeah. is that value? Yeah. Yeah. I think that there are a lot of misconceptions mm -hmm. and, and I want to state right off the bat that there are obvious good intentions here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important for anybody along the construction value chain to try and deliver or a design value chain as well to try and deliver owners desires as efficiently as possible. However, there are some um, unintended consequences when it comes to lighting, certainly, which is frequently a topic of value engineering, surprisingly, um, because generally it's left to contractors uh, to decide how to, uh, how to deliver these projects and how to deliver a certain lumen output and a certain light level that are required by code that are required by engineers and that are also required by design standards within the, a data center owner's uh, footprint in the data center itself. But, uh, you know, those decisions are frequently off uh, offset or, or kind of off um, uh, given to contractors to actually decide. And it's not contractors fault. This is this is not, you know, they're doing the best for their clients as well. However, there are some unintended consequences of using a less efficient fixture or a uh, or a less costly fixture sometimes to try and deliver that same lumen output. And frequently what that results in is a contractor looking at this and saying, hey, we're going to give you a lower upfront cost, but then not thinking about the total cost of ownership to the actual owner itself. So what was, say, the same lumen output from one fixture, say, uh, of a high quality fixture versus a lower quality fixture, that lower quality fixture actually uses more power to deliver that same lumen output, that same lumen level. Uh, and what does that look like across the data center? Because we're talking about light fixtures here, Ben, you know, yeah. I don't blame anybody for thinking, hey, you know, a light fixture is the last thing that I think about or is the, is the, the kind of lowest level of importance. Sure, I get that completely. But let me put it into perspective which is the following, that let's say a single light fixture, and, and we've done some analyses here for customers of ours, a single light fixture, you know, one of our fixtures could potentially have a 3.6 to 5 watt, single watt difference. You know, the, we're not talking kilowatts yet, but we'll get there. Uh, 3.5, 3 3.6 to 5 watt difference. Okay, so that's one fixture, but then there's the snowball effect. So let's call it an average 200,000 square foot data center, a 40 megawatt data center, a 36 to 40 megawatt data center, that can have as many as 3,000 fixtures in it. Mm -hmm. So now let's start talking about that five watt difference again, and suddenly we're talking about 15 kilowatts of power right up front. Now let's look at that across the total power consumption of a year's worth of power and energy in a data center. And suddenly we're thinking about you know, six, eight, 16 megawatt hours wow. of energy that is spent on extra on lighting because of this value engineering that was done up front 
right. not thinking about the total cost of ownership, not thinking about sustainability, just thinking about upfront costs and not examining really what happens at the end of this for the owner when they have to pay the lighting bill, when they have to look at their PUE and say, wow, why is lighting a disproportionately large part of this? Right. Yeah, that's a really, thank you for explaining that so well. Um, yeah, very important, actually. When yeah. you put it into numbers like that to look at the data center lighting from the yeah. from the onset, right? Yeah. Um, okay, perfect. So what do you think d data center operators should prioritize when it comes to thinking about their lighting? You know, as opposed to value engineering, we import, we really recommend prioritizing value of product as well as quality of product. You know, ensuring that it's not just, you know, a light fixture that can do the job. It's a light fixture that will actually help your bottom line when it comes to sustainability initiatives, when it comes to uh, energy consumption in the data center itself. So really looking at value and quality for these products as well. And then most importantly, looking for, you know, quality suppliers, quality partners or manufacturers who want to partner with owners, who want to partner with contractors in order to deliver these really important buildings on a programmatic basis, as opposed to just site by site, individually priced by individually priced site. Yeah. Let's What we do here at Lantana too is we take a look at the entire country and say, okay, we can guarantee you pricing across all of these different regions here on this contractual basis. And we can do so while maintaining quality. We can do so while maintaining lead times because that's another really important one. You know, mm -hmm. why on earth should an owner really worry about lead times for lighting? Sure, that's an easy thing to say, except that it can it is part of your certificate of occupancy when when it comes down to it. It is part of your ability to hand over that space to your client as an owner. You know, if they if they're leasing it out, yeah. they need to have lighting in there in order to deliver it to their clients to generate revenue. So those are some of the main things that we recommend owners to really think about, you know, quality uh, type of contractual relationship with manufacturers and then most importantly, type of supplier relationship when you're looking at lighting for data centers themselves. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure having you on JSA TV. Thank Thanks you. for joining us again. <laughs> and thank you to our viewers back at home for hanging out with us here live from DCD, Virginia. Sam from Lantana LED. I'm Candace Sipos signing out. Well, not really. We have a few more interviews. So hang out with us. <laughs> and happy networking, everyone. Talk soon.